Hi, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision, and welcome back to this Niagara and Certificates video series. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of certificates and keys. So what is a certificate? Certificates match cryptographic keys to an identity. That identity can be a device, a person, a server, and they prove that that identity is who they claim to be. That is done through a verification process or a signing process um, by a trusted identity or a trusted entity. Uh, that could be uh, an IT department inside of a, a large network infrastructure, or it could be a third-party company like GoDaddy. Um, and that forms a chain of trust so that the end user's computer or browser knows that they can trust the device is who they say they are. Certificates tend to be one of the more um, visible pieces of a secure connection to an end user, um, which is what makes them uh, critical to get right so that you don't get that typical error message that most of us have seen when using the self-signed certificate that comes with a Niagara station. So I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with a uh, server certificate, but there are also a, a handful of other certificates that are available to us in Niagara um, that you'll probably come across at some point or another. So the first of these types, as I mentioned, is a server certificate. And this is the one that we've all seen. Uh, it comes bundled in a Niagara station as a self-signed certificate known as Tritium. Um, and it's, it's used on servers to allow us to create our SSL and our TLS communications. So our HTTPS communications, our FOXS communications, and our secure platform connections are all used um, alongside cert server certificates. Client cert certificates sort of take this and, and flip it on its head, and they basically replace uh, what we typically think of as credentials to log into a server. So instead of having a username and password to get into a server, you could have a certificate that you would use to log into that server. This is used a lot in the system administration space in the IT world um, for things like SSH. But in our Niagara space, they can be used to allow us to do things like a sort of pseudo kiosk mode where a user wouldn't have to log in or a, a, a screen wouldn't have to log in. The browser on that screen would already have this certificate in it and Niagara would know that, hey, when anyone signs in with that certificate, I know it's this user, they have access to these things. Our third certificate type is a certificate authority. These certificates are used to sign other certificates um, to prove their identity so that you're not signing your own certificate, which proves no um, identity uh, verification at all. And our last type of certificate is a code signing certificate. Now, this is probably not something that you would ever create yourself unless you're doing some development for Niagara, but you'll probably run into them as we get into newer and newer versions of Niagara because their purpose is that a developer would sign a module and that signed module would basically... Uh, verify that the contents have not been modified or tampered with. So a third-party entity hasn't gone in after the developer created their module and messed with some code without you knowing. This would keep you um, in the know and it would basically tell you, hey, it looks like this module's been messed with since it left the developer's hands. So this is a feature that's come in in later versions of Niagara. And as we move forward, it's something that modules are going to be required to have is a verified signature uh, certificate on their modules or Niagara won't run them at all. So we know what a certificate is. We know it has an identity and it has a key. So what is a key? A key is essentially just a very large random number that your computer creates <clears throat> excuse me, in order to allow the secure connection to happen. Most of this internet uh, encryption that's used today is uh, built on what's known as PKI or public key infrastructure. Um, and what it allows us to do is create asymmetric keys. So basically... We have a private key that never leaves our device or our server, and we have a public key that gets given out to any clients that may want to connect to our server. This is known as asymmetric cryptography, 
And it allows us to do something like this. So we have Alice. Alice is our server in this case, and she has a private key. That private key will never leave her computer ever. It shouldn't ever be put on a USB stick. It shouldn't move really anywhere from where it was initially created. Then we have Bob, who's our client, and he's he wants to connect to Alice. So Alice gives him her public key, and then that public key is used by Bob to encrypt his message that he wants to send Alice. So he'll take that public key, encrypt the message, Alice will get it. Now the only way to decrypt that message is with the private key that's associated with the public key. The only person who has that in this case is Alice. So Alice would use her private key, decrypt the message, and then do whatever she needs to do with the private key. This is sort of the the bedrock of what makes um, these certificates important and what makes uh, TLS and SSL work. So we talked about uh, verifying trust or um, verifying that uh, an identity is who they say they are. This is done through what's known as a chain of trust in your certificate. So a certificate tends to have a, a bunch of certificates inside of it. And at the base of the, all of those is a root certificate. And that root certificate is typically self-signed. And its trustworthiness comes from a means um, other than what we would think of for uh, knowing that it's trustworthy. And that's typically something like... Uh, physical distribution or uh, physical verification of the person or the uh, company. So in modern internet connected devices, you always will have some set of root certificates that are trusted inherently by the operating system or by the browser. And uh, these come out of the box with the browser or with the operating system. So Windows has a whole bunch of certificates that it trusts out of the box. Um, and that's sort of what makes all of your SSL connections work and what keeps you from seeing error messages all the time when you, when you browse the web. You have this trust store of certificates on your computer and you can go to it by going to the manage computer certificates in Windows and see all of the certificates, root certificates that are included with Windows and that are trusted by default. We can add to those uh, trust stores and we will do that later on in this series. Um, but for now, it's just important to know that they exist and what they are. Browsers and devices expect your entire chain uh, to be valid. And the the key to that is that the root certificate is valid in that chain. So when you open up a connection to a Niagara station and it's using its self-signed certificate that came with it out of the box, that certificate is not valid because it's self-signed. And that that certificate isn't in the uh, end user's trust store. So we'll, we'll talk about how we get around that and how we, we make our certificates valid and trusted. Um, but for now, it's good to know what the chain of trust is and, and why it's trusted by your end device. So if we visually look, we can see what this chain of trust looks like. So we have our N entity certificate. This is going to be our server certificate. Um, it has some information about um, who the owner is. It'll have obviously the key like we talked about. Um, and then it'll be signed by an intermediate certificate. Root certificate authorities tend to create intermediate certificates so that if something happens, they can revoke them and not have to revoke the main uh, root certificate that's been distributed maybe millions of times potentially. So they'll have this intermediate certificate that is signed by their root certificate and is what signs your server certificate. It's also good to know that there could be multiple intermediate certificates here that are chained onto one another which is why we call it a chain of trust. And then obviously we have our last certificate, our root certificate, and this is the one that should be in the trust store of the device that we're connecting from. And if it's not, that's when we're going to get the error message in our browser or get the message in Niagara that uh, we need to add that or verify that in our trust store. So those are the basics of certificates and keys. In the next video, we'll be taking a little bit more of a deeper dive into certificates and the information, the physical information that's inside them. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.